Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode four of Sound Editing and Design for Visual Media. In this episode, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of editing audio. Before you get to editing big gunfight scenes like this, <laughs> designing engines for futuristic cars or guns, or creating sounds for a robot, You need to get good at editing audio. This is possible by memorizing hotkeys and becoming fluent at using them. You need to etch these hotkeys into your muscle memory, much like you would when you're learning chords on a guitar. You also need the ability to quickly access bass sounds and navigate large audio libraries so you can quickly find the sounds you're looking for without disrupting your workflow. We'll cover all of this today and even edit our very first couple of scenes. We'll start with some hotkeys. When it comes to editing audio, what hotkey you set to what command really matters. It's not only about setting a random key that you then memorize, you need to take a few things into consideration. So let's get into Reaper and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in Reaper, I've imported some stock footage, just a shot of two people walking in the rain. There are some car buys and we're clearly in a city, not close to the center, but a relatively busy area. I'm just using this scene to show some editing techniques. You can see my keyboard in the bottom right corner so we can talk about hotkeys. To bring in sound effects, you can use the Media Explorer, open it by pressing Option, Command and X. And here you can access any file on your computer, basically. I have all my libraries in a folder called SFX library so I can either add a shortcut to it or I can make a database from it both by right clicking on the folder. If you use a shortcut you will still be able to see the folder hierarchy but if you use a database Reaper will simply create an index of all the files. I prefer databases because they make for faster searching but the downside is that you need to update databases by right clicking every once in a while whenever you buy or import new libraries. Just know that the first time you create a database it takes a while for Reaper to scan all those files and index them. Right now we want to find some bed tracks for our video. If I type in city, I can find hundreds of audio files with that name. Not all of them are appropriate for the scene and going through them takes a while. If you want to be a good editor, you need to learn your libraries. So do some homework and listen to all your libraries. And then when you're working on projects, you know which file to go to. You can also add custom tags to any audio file and add additional notes, like where you used them before or anything else that the audio reminds you of that isn't in the title. So you can search for those words later on. Here you want to find some bed tracks of traffic to lay behind everything else. In this case, we want a wet sounding traffic because the sound car tires make on wet roads is very different than on dry roads. So I found an audio file that I found appropriate for the scene I'm looking at. When you find the sound you like, you can either drag the whole thing into your project or you can select a portion of it in the Media Explorer and then just drag that bit. You can also audition everything in the Media Explorer before bringing it in. I can now double click my scenes region to create a time selection and run the action, trim items to selected area. My hotkey for that is Command and T. But let's not do that. Let's put a little more thought into this. So another good good hotkey is if you go shift and one vertical zoom to select the tracks minimize others so let's talk some hotkeys so when i'm editing i always have my right hand on the mouse and my left hand on kind of that region of the keyboard so i can quickly access my mouse modifiers all the keys in this region i can quickly and easily access without moving my hand when you're choosing editing hotkeys or if you're using the default ones you'll notice that a lot of editing hotkeys are in this region and there are just one key commands because we're using editing hotkeys very very often so it's best to choose one key command commands for editing and also have them in the left region of your keyboard that you can access with your left hand. So I have A set to trim left edge of items and D set to trim right edge of items. S is set to split item under mouse cursor. I prefer this command to the default because it lets me just place my cursor anywhere and cut. I don't need to select an item nor do I need to stop playback. The downside is that I have a separate action for splitting multiple files which is B. Obviously I can delete any item using backspace but I can also ripple delete them. We can put any track to ripple editing but I can also do it quickly without going in ripple editing mode. For example, I can select this item and I want to delete it and bring everything on the right in its place. So I can press F1. This is a custom command called ripple delete item and it basically sets ripple editing per track, removes items and then sets ripple editing off. All these custom actions will be available in the blog post on the website. So make sure to check that out. So now that I set these cuts, these don't have any crossfades between them. So if we want to crossfade, there's a few ways of doing that. First of all, I can batch crossfade if I just go option and X. That's the command cross crossfade adjacent selected items move edges of adjacent items so basically when two things are adjacent it just moves them a little bit so that they are auto crossfaded so that's one way of doing it if you want kind of more precision work you can also set a time selection select your items and press x and that is crossfade items within time selection which if i'm not mistaken the default hotkey for that is f but don't quote me on that so that's cool but that's three actions so we can instead use a mouse modifier press command and comma to bring your preferences go to mouse modifiers arrange view and 
and right drag and I have my option set to marquee select items and time. So instead of setting the time selection, then selecting items with option right drag, I can do both. Then I just press X. So those are some ways of crossfading. I prefer to just make my cuts and then batch crossfading and then I can edit those crossfades later on. Here are some other useful tips for crossfading. These are all mouse modifiers. So obviously you can trim each side of a crossfade like this. You can set your mouse between the point where two crossfades meet and you can move them around. I can also hold shift and then move the whole crossfade around across the items. I can also use command to keep the center point but tighten or widen the crossfade. So one tip that I've given before in my rapid fire reaper tutorials is to go to this mouse modifier, pin this to the top of your video and just read through and kind of try to memorize them as you go. Another thing I have is I have my F set to fade items into cursor and then I have my G set to fade items out to cursor and command and F is set to remove all fades this action. Now I know I'm going too fast but a list of all these commands will be in the blog post so check that out. Obviously I can always use my mouse to drag regions around but hotkeys are quicker and more precise than mouse work. So far we've seen tons of actions to move and trim items and fades but another useful set of actions for film work are actions that move the edit cursor or move items to the edit cursor. These allow us to make precise edits sync to our picture. I got this scene right here. It's a foot chase and there are tons of gunshots. We want to cut gunshot sounds exactly in sync with picture. So the first thing I have is I have these two buttons, period and comma, to go through my video frame by frame. And those are these two commands. X-ray, move edit cursor to next frame and uh, edit cursor to previous frame. And I want to find all the frames where a gun is being shot, right? So that's one. I'm just playing through and pressing M to place markers. That's another one. Rinse and repeat with the rest of the gunshots. We want to edit these exactly to sync. So I come back to my Media Explorer again and I look for gunshots. Again, multiple hundreds of gunshots. Once again, you need to go through your libraries and find appropriate gunshots yourself. In this scene, we want them to be outdoors, so no reverb of a room on them and you need multiple gunshot recordings from the same gun to cut all of them to this picture. So just audition your gunshots in your Media Explorer. All right, let's just use this sound. Let's bring in some of the more single ones. Maybe let's bring a double one. So I'm gonna drag it over here. So we imported a bunch of gunshot sound effects. Obviously you can dynamic split them, but I never trust dynamic split to cut the tails appropriately. So I just split by transient and I can cut the tails using my hotkeys way faster than figuring out the correct settings in the dynamic split menu. So that's what I do. You do you boo. So these are all cut at transients. If I place my edit cursor anywhere with this item selected and I hit E, the beginning of the item will go to my edit cursor. And that is move selected items to edit cursor. Now I also have option and E. An option in E moves the right edge of item. So sometimes, for example, if you're using any kind of reverse stuff, we don't care what's at the beginning, we care what's at the end. So again, I place my edit cursor anywhere, hit option and E, and it goes over there. So now that we made these cuts, we're going to bring them into sync. So I can select any item. I can hit four to go to this marker where the first shot happens, hit E, and it's there. Now, as you can see, the tail is longer than where the next one comes in. This is why we always cascade our sound effects, meaning the first sound effect in any scene goes on SFX1, and the next ones keep going on the track below even if we do have space on sfx1 so we just cascade them left to right and top to bottom then when we get to 8 we go back to sfx1 sfx 9 to 16 are for stereo effects but for guns i usually use mono so we can place them on any channel in 5.1 based on where it's coming from terms and conditions apply obviously so i put my gunshots on 1 and 8 and i don't need to split to mono right now reaper tracks accept any number of channels so we'll just worry about that when we're exporting so after that i just put my edit cursor on the next marker, place the next sound on the bottom track and press E, rinse and repeat. And they're there and now. Now this is very simple. We're never gonna just use a very boring gunshot like this. We're gonna design our own gunshot. But this was my way of showing you that splitting items by transient and bringing them to any cursor point is a super useful tool. So that's a quick way of adding gunshots. So let's get back to our first scene. So in our first scene, we also have this car passing by. This one we need to cut kind of more to picture. So again, I go to my Media Explorer, I go car by, and it's a stereo file, I'll bring it in and let's listen to it. As you can see, it's kind of a wet sounding car by. So again, that's appropriate for this, right? So I have other car bys. 
that's just not appropriate. It's too fast for us, which we can change by changing the play rate, but also it, the floor sounds wrong, right? It doesn't sound wet to me. So now we want to we want to edit this carbide. And as it happens, this carbide is going left to right. If you found the correct carbide, but the direction is wrong. So let's say that this carbide was going from right to left, set take channel mode to reverse stereo, which I have set to command shift control in R. And if I do it, boom, the two are flipped. This time it was correct. So one problem that you see is that I placed my marker where the car is going right by the pedestrians, right? But a car by sound is not something I can split at the transient. And the beginning is when the car isn't there yet. So obviously if I just hit three and press E, this won't be correct. This is where another useful thing comes in. If you go to the very bottom lower corner of your item, you can see the cursor changing to this little icon. And then if I drag this out, Okay, it puts this line here and this it's called the snap offset. For any sound with an envelope that doesn't give us a clear transient like a carbide, I can put my snap offset there and I can hit control option and E. And that is move selected items to edit cursor, except that the Zanakius version by default always respects the sync offset. So if I hit E, it'll bring the beginning there. But if I hit option control and E, it'll bring the sync offset there. So now if we watch the video, So now the moment the car passes the microphone and the moment the car passes the center of the shot are synced, but overall the sound is slightly wrong still. So I can move my faders or adjust them by holding control and changing the shape. I can also alt and drag the edge of the item to change the play rate to match the speed of the car. Always have preserve pitch when changing play rate ticked off so you don't get weird granularization in your audio. We don't care about the pitch too much with sound effects, so just go nuts. Another thing is if I hold control here, the place where my fade ends stays the same when I press control but the rest is dragged out so that way I can kind of have a longer one and let's listen to it Yep, that sounds about right to me. So we haven't done too, too much, but we've already covered a bunch of hotkeys. Now, what you set your hotkeys to doesn't matter too much. Just make sure that they're in this area. I don't want to take my focus away from the video or the screen. I don't want to be looking down at my hands. I don't even want to take my right hand off of the mouse. That's why I have F1 here because the backspace is all the way over here. I don't like that. So I don't want to split this there and then hit backspace. That takes my hand off. So that's why I use D or A. We talked about moving things to the markers like that and then I can alt click and delete all of these. So when you want something really well synced, moving things using these commands, move selected items to edit cursor are really useful. So already you have a bunch of hotkeys to memorize. I'm not saying you should do your hotkeys exactly like mine, set them your own, but do consider where you place them. Do consider the fact that if you're using a hotkey a lot, you don't want it to have two mouse modifiers, right? It doesn't make any sense for me to put my split to like command and S, right? I want to really quickly do it with one button. At the same point, I don't want any command that I don't want to accidentally trigger to be set to one key. So for example, my reverse stereo is control command shift and R. I don't want to set it just to R because I may just accidentally press R and not notice that I reverse the stereo on a file, which is really hard to detect. And in the blog post, I will write a lot more on this topic and give you more examples as well. So that's it for today. Check out the blog where I will list all the commands that I mentioned in this video and all the hotkeys that I've set. The link will be in the description. Your homework until next week is to get fluent at using these. A good suggestion would be to grab a three or four minute audio clip and just edit it in different ways and get fluent at using them. Now, if you do have a video to go with it, even better, it will be more practical and it'll be more close to real life. But really all you need is some audio files to get good at editing. Obviously there are as many ways of editing as there are editors. This is just my way of doing things. Let me know in the comments if there are any actions that you can't live without when editing. Next week, we're gonna dive deeper into BG editing. We're gonna go out to the field and record some audio of our own. Then come to Reaper and edit them quickly and do some mastering as well. Then we're gonna talk about how to lay bed tracks on a project do like like and comment and i'll see you next week bye bye